Video 4, the emotional second toes and balls of the feet. So how do you feel? We're now going to look at the emotional, spiritual aspect of feet. Everybody has a tale to tell. The trick is to find out what the story is for them so that they can heal themselves. So now we're going to move to the second toe. This is the feeling toe, connected to the balls of the feet, which reflect the chest reflexes. The second toes and the balls of the feet pick up the emotional journey. It's toe number two. And the interesting thing is number two forms a question mark. So as you can see, so the energies go from past emotions, we're looking at the soles of the feet, the emotions we thought in the past, we carry them over to how we feel in the present. It then runs through the emotional area, through the thymus gland, and down the center, and depending on what we do, it affects our emotions. And then that is carried through back to the family. The trick is not to let the grass grow under our feet. The second toe is all about nature and how we interact with nature, and particularly the color green. The second toes also have the main eye reflexes. These are also shared by the big toes. If you recall, the pineal or pineal gland functions according to the amount of light coming through the eye, and that affects the biological cycles of the body. So the eye reflexes are very important when it comes to massaging the pineal gland because it's all to do with the cycles, menstrual cycles, sleeping cycles, and so on. When feeling emotionally battered, the second toe will often bend down like this. These people can also just bend that one toe. If you try yourself, you generally, when you bend your toes, you'll generally find all the toes will bend together. But a person who's been emotionally battered will only bend this toe. So when we're going from the second toe through the expressive areas, we're onto the balls of the feet. We're going from the thoughts to how we put those thoughts and manifest those thoughts in the body from the soul to the souls. The word emotion is actually energy in motion. What is the energy? The energy comes from thoughts. And as we run those thoughts through the body, what actually happens, they cause a vibration. And they cause that vibration in the cells. What that does is release the memories. So depending on the memories are the feelings that will be evoked. So emotion comes from memories that have been stored in the body. That is why often we go, why do I feel like this? I don't know why I feel like this. It's something that has been suppressed. And sometimes, of course, we're still dealing with those issues from seven generations or more. So sometimes we may just not know. And it doesn't matter because with reflexology and reflexology, what actually happens is that these energies just dissipate. So as these energies are stirred, they're also affected by color. And color is very powerful when it comes to healing, which is why we're using all our digits when it comes to reflexology. Purple is connected with the divine consciousness. So as we saw with working with the thumbs, then that raises the consciousness. Blue, the color of the sky and the seas, connects heaven to earth. It also allows us to take the external world internally and vice versa. And that helps the overall expression of who and what we are. Then we have the second finger and the second toe linked to the color green. These help to evoke loving feelings when we use them in massage. Then you've got the passionate yellow, the joy-filled exchange of orange, orange being the oh the range of relationships. And then we've got the red to help generate new concepts. When it comes to using color, when we're doing reflexology, we can see the impact. The purple also affects the creativity and the mood swings. The blue helps to penetrate the whole and opens up the channels of expressions. Green is very provocative and very sympathetic, while the yellow calms and stimulates. Orange helps the exchange of energies within our communications and relationships and helps to redistribute those energies within the body. Red provides an energy source. It also covers the spectrum. The other thing about color is the feet are constantly changing color. So when it comes to looking at the color of the skin on the feet, relate it to the various chakra energies. 
But because color is very emotive and stirs memories, some of the issues that we go through are stirred by the sight of certain things in our lives. And certain things in our lives will evoke some unpleasant emotions. So let's just give you an example. Somebody may not like the color blue. And that could well be something to do with expression. Maybe they don't like blue cars. Anything to do with cars is to do with men. Because remember, cars are the men's pride and joy. The question to ask when somebody doesn't like blue cars, is there any relationship between men and the way you express yourself or the way men express themselves in the past? Green is affected by stubbornness, when we are feeling crushed, when life is boring, through jealousy and envy. But it can also help us create space within ourselves. It can also bring balance, harmony and self-worth. When we are deflated, we become more opinionated, we hurt more easily, we're unforgiving, feel inadequate, we feel flat, we're extremely sensitive. Now this is an interesting thing because a lot of healers are particularly sensitive. And as we find out later, we work through our family issues. We choose our families because they have the same issues. Why do people choose healing as a profession? because they need to heal themselves. They're also ultra-sensitive because they pick up much more than most people. So it helps to distinguish between extreme sensitivity and a person who is ultra-sensitive because of their healing capacity. People become unlovable. They become competitive, heartless, critical, self-destructive. And of course, that leads to demotivation. Whatever we see affects how we feel and how we feel affects how we breathe. So if we feel good about life, we take in big deep breaths. When we are depressed and miserable, we won't even bother to breathe. So eyes are going to take in our perceptions of what is going on in our life. Short sightedness happens 18 months to two years after a traumatic event in our childhood or later in life. And long sighted, is when we're looking ahead all the time. There are other aspects to the eyes as well. Astigmatism is when it's difficult to focus because there's so much emotional turmoil in the family. Red eye, because of infection, red being family society, also associated with anger and frustration. It also has broken blood vessels often, and blood vessels, when they're broken, are associated with unhappiness. So when there's red eye and broken blood vessels, there's something that the person is very unhappy about seeing. Unity in the family and society. It can spread very easily as a result of that. Everything is a perception. And as I've been speaking, I've been talking about the toes, the colors of the toes, what they represent. But the interesting thing is that each of the organs pick up these five aspects of energy. So on the inside of each eye is what we see intellectually. On the outside is what we are seeing within the family. And right in the center is what we see about what has been done and not done. It also goes the other way, where the tops is about the intellectual aspect, the bottoms, the family, society, and right in the center again is what has been done. This helps when it comes to understanding why people develop, for example, styes. Where does it develop? So, for example, if a sty develops here, it's to do with the emotion. But it's also within the family and communication relationship area. And from what we see, we develop opinions. This is all very well and good, but remember it is our opinion. We each have our own point of view. Take this fabulous book, for example. When a person is looking at it, they'll see the cover. But somebody else on the other side may be looking at the back. Now the cover has a picture on it and it has big writing. The back has smaller writing. Then there's other people who are looking inside, where now there's no color and just writing, black and white. But the person who sees the cover says, but I know, there's a picture there, it's got big writing. 
And the person who's looking at the back said, absolute nonsense. It's just writing. It's a lot of color, I agree. Then, of course, we have the people looking on the inside. And they're saying, you two are talking absolute rubbish. There's no color. There are no pictures, just black and white writing. So we see things from our point of view. We form opinions according to what is in sight at that time. And this can often lead to arguments because nobody is prepared to see other people's point of view. So the second toes are connected to the air element. That is also the breath, the eyes, the green, the thymus gland, the lungs and the balls of the feet are connected to father. The breasts are connected to mother. So when people have issues in these areas, the questions would be around, if it's the lungs, your father. What is your relationship with your father? And if it wasn't him, what was his relationship with his father? Likewise, if it's the mother, what is your relationship with your mother? How was your mother coping with being a mother? How was she coping with nurturing all those beautiful children in the life? Or how was the grandmother? Did the grandmother like being a mother? Did she want 12 children? There are so many different questions you can ask, but bearing in mind the male-female aspects. So the second toes show how we are connecting with the outer world and taking it into the inner world. The second toes and the balls of the feet are also connected to self-esteem, self-worth, and by massaging these particular areas, it helps to boost the morale. So when we breathe in, we breathe in according to how we feel. It will affect the capacity of our lungs and how much air. But over and above that, the emotion we are keeping close to our chest will fill that air. And when we breathe out, that air will then affect the environment. So en masse, when a lot of people are breathing out a lot of discontented air, they do tend to pollute the atmosphere. I wonder how often you have said, I don't feel too good. But what are we really saying when we say that? Good about what? We've spoken about bad, but we haven't spoken about good. So why do we say we don't feel good? And then we say we feel better. Better about what? So what happens when we don't feel good? We become accusational and also we become more conditioned. We often withdraw and become confused. We feel worthless often. It's often because of things that have been going on in our lives. Asthma, if you take the word as the ma, remember that the breasts are very much to do with the mother, but also we were talking about the female side inhaling the new fresh air. So maybe asthma is when the mother feels smothered and ends up smothering the child. There are many different stories. Just take these as guidelines. When we get irritated, we sneeze to get rid of all the irritants from the body. Not feeling good enough often also comes from guilt. It comes from grief, hostility. There are so many reasons why we don't feel good enough. And then we start attacking ourselves. And then there's the fear. And what we fear, we attract. So as you can see here, this lady or man, I don't know who it is, is holding back their toes. And I spoke about holding back our ideas. And can you see the difference in the two feet? The right foot is showing that in the past, this person suppressed their ideas. You can't even see the toe necks. Now they have totally withdrawn, which has made life very heavy going, as you can see by the balls of the feet. Obviously, there is a lot more here. But at the moment, we're talking about the second toe and the balls of the feet. One of the things you can see is a very big M coming from a doing to the feeling, doing, feeling, doing. And again, on this foot, M often represents mother. So when we see an M, unless the person's name is Martha, Margaret or Martin, it all depends. Again, you have to ask the question. In this case, the question would be, what is your relationship with an M, anybody with an M? Don't put the idea into the head, it could be mother, but just ask them that one question. Some people have a fear of feeling. Others have a fear of hurting other people's feelings. Then there are those who have a fear of being wrong. They always have to be right. 
And isn't it interesting how that finger, Mr. Peter Pointer, comes out when people do not have the courage to take responsibility for what they have done themselves? This seems to be quite a biggie all over the world. Fear of not being good enough. It's a fear that they have to be perfect all the time. With an army officer dad, that was one of my biggest things, that I was not good enough. I had to be perfect. But what is perfect at the end of the day? I just learned that just being myself was perfect enough, my authentic self. And when many people can't deal with their feelings, it goes up in smoke and they take up the habit of smoking. It creates a smoke screen. So other people are fooled into thinking that they feel better about themselves than they do. The person doesn't feel confident enough blames the blah, blah, blah me. They point fingers outwards. And remember, wanting to be right all the time, right is past. So what is right and what is wrong? We tend to point fingers and pass on the blame when we're not feeling confident enough to deal with the situation ourselves. The thing is, when we blame, we hand our power away and give all our power to whatever we blame it, be another person, the weather, because now we put it out of our own hands. When we take responsibility for what we are doing, then of course we can do something about it. And then there's the complaining. We are a society of complainers. But look at the word. Campaign, campaign. Those people who keep complaining become an absolute pain to others. I don't know about you, but I think most people tend to avoid those who constantly complain about things. They become not only a pain in themselves, but a pain to others as well. It's understanding what type of pain, because then we can get the story. What is going on? What is really hurting them? Is it something like sciatica that gets on the nerves? So now straight away we have a clue, because remember, nerves are to do with control. So is this person anxious and frustrated that they're not in control? Follow the line of the sciatica and see exactly where it's going and ask the pertinent questions. If it's a dull pain, it could be life has become boring or they're feeling very depressed. If they feel wounded, that comes from the emotional area. Cramps often is when we feel our style has been cramped or we're having to withdraw. They were not able to move as we would like to. Burn often are burning issues. Irritation. Remember, perfectionists get irritated far more easily than those people who say it doesn't matter. We've also got the gripes. Well, we know that when people gripe, it is really quite tedious. And then there's the sharp pains, and that's the sharp retorts that we can have in conversation, which can be quite torturous. And then there's the persistent chronic type pains that often cause spasms. This comes from the family society area. So when it comes to emotional stress, again, look at the words that we use. We spoke about asthma as the ma. Some people have an allergy to milk, which comes from the emotional area. But think about it. Think about the expression of being milked by another person. Often the mother will feel milk that people are taking advantage of her. And it's not just mothers that feel taken advantage of. It can be anybody. Pneumonia, I briefly mentioned, is nothing new to moan about. Sore boobs. Sore about all the boobs we make in life, possibly? No, it's more than that. It's the hurt again related to being a mother. Bronchitis. Now, all this distress comes from the lungs. When it becomes inflamed, it's something that's happened that affects the person emotionally, like bronchitis. Then we have emphysema, because now anything to do with water, even though it's still in the lungs, this is now to do with communication relationships. What is going on there? Are they drowning in their relationships? In the case of a mother, are they feeling engorged, overwhelmed by the whole situation? And we spoke about cancer. When it comes to cracked nipples on a woman, it's because the woman's feeling divided. She doesn't know whether to nurse the baby she's just brought home or the big baby she left at home. Autoimmune disease seems to be more common these days than ever before. I wonder why. Maybe it's because we're being very, very hard on ourselves and attacking ourselves. 
So rather than be hard on oneself and self-critical, look for the beauty within. The word beauty is be you to the full. And when you're being yourself to the full, then you can look at yourself no matter what you physically look like and be proud of who and what you are. AIDS is extreme vulnerability. It often affects people who've been scorned by society. Think of the homosexuals, the prostitutes. But the irony is that AIDS is spread through two loving mediums. It's spread through blood, contaminated blood. So the question is, why is the person having a blood transfusion in the first place? What is going on in their life? Then the other medium by which AIDS is spread, of course, are the sexual juices. Another area for lovemaking. So what is really going on here? Again, it's the person attacking themselves for not being good enough or not fitting into society. Remember I told you about the voids that we don't like. What is happening, particularly with homosexuals, is what is missing in their life is a good relationship with their biological father. This is not to blame, please, but to get the story. For example, I've heard stories of a boy whose father shot himself through the head and he witnessed it. He became homosexual. And there's other stories of fathers abandoning the sons. There are many, many aspects, but when it comes to homosexual, but please do not blame. Just understand what is the story. Why is this person having to fill the void, a lack of male energy in his life, and fill it with another male energy? Females, lesbians, I haven't come across so many, but when I did present in Sydney once, one lady came up to me and said, I'm a lesbian. It's a very similar story for me but it could also be mother. And what is the solution for AIDS other than having regular reflexology and reflexology? It's giving oneself permission to just be. Be who you are. Be your authentic self. When we're looking at the second toes, look at the stature, shape, etc. Now again, if the toe, the second toe, is hiding behind the big toe, then of course that person is hiding their feelings and trying to intellectualize that. If it's going in front of the third toe, as here, then they're putting their feelings into everything they do, or they're letting their feelings get in the way of what they are doing and not getting on and doing what they should do. When we're doing the reflexology, straighten that toe. Then, of course, there are the markings. Along the shoulder reflexes, you often will feel lumps and bumps. This is beautiful to massage and to let go of all those shoulds and shouldn't do's, which will help the chest relax. When you find a line down the center of the ball of the foot, it often means that the person is living in two very different emotional environments, possibly boarding school, home, and that there's two different emotions experienced in these spaces. There may be hard skin over the nipple, and this is when a person is protecting themselves from having to give too much or from being milked. Also, we find markings on the feet. A triangle could be three people involved, feeling boxed in. And the lines are possibly the emotional ties we feel, particularly if it's on the family side. We're going to do the heart just now, but a line under the heart, and it actually could be a cut under the heart, is often when we feel heartbroken. It can be a cut like a divorce when we've been cut away from another person. And it may even have two lines if the person has felt cut off emotionally twice. I love the fact that I put chest compliant, it should be chest complaints. But these are the areas to focus on for chest complaints and breathing difficulties. This being the thymus reflex, a lot of people do protect themselves so they do often develop hard skin. Then we have the bunion. Can you see what is happening with the bunion here? If you recall, this section here on the spine is the first trimester of the pregnancy. And this is the emotional time of the pregnancy. So if the mother is feeling emotionally insecure or she's not very happy about the pregnancy, she may be reaching out for more emotional support. She may be getting a lot of pressure 
to bend into other people's ideas and knock her own feelings. So the question to ask anyone with bunions is, do you know what happened during the first trimester of your time in your mother's womb? Also look for symbols. Now this is when it gets really fascinating. It's almost like looking at a movie sometimes when you're looking at the feet because so many different shadows, darkness, lightness, and even shapes appear on the feet. For example, I had a young girl who came and she had EG on her right foot and GS on her left foot. The big, big letters. And I'm going, okay, eggs. I said, oh yes, eggs. I've never seen anyone get so excited over eggs. Apparently her family came from Lithuania. And when the father went to the shops, he couldn't say the word eggs. So he used to act like a chicken, buck, 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 and point to the eggs. And now that in itself didn't really explain why she had it on her feet. But it gave me a clue as to the actual question to ask. So my question was, what is it like to be a Lithuanian in Australia? Now another amazing one, and this is an incredible story, and this is where we need to use our imagination, allow our intuition to come through. I was in Australia and had over 60 ladies and one beautiful gentleman walked in. And it was a time in the 1990s when the earrings were beginning to come out and he had earrings around his ears. He was extraordinary. He put his feet up and I hate to say it was very unprofessional of me, but I just couldn't stop laughing. On his feet, I could see Mickey Mouse and a dog. And fortunately, he took it the right way. And he said, why are you laughing so much? And I said, well, I've never seen Mickey Mouse and a dog on anybody's feet. And he said, that's extraordinary. I used to have dreams of Mickey Mouse and a dog. I wrote to America to ask a dream analyst what it meant, and they didn't know. So I said to him, it's really easy. He said, really? I said, if you take the word dog and you turn it around, you get God. And of course, somehow it seemed that you're taking the Mickey out of God or somebody's taking the Mickey out of God. As it happened, he was a very innovative priest and he was being criticized by the church because he was going into the church dressed as Rambo. He had sweets up his frock and he was distributing them to the kids. He was actually being criticized by the boards at that time and it was an issue for him. So when you see images on the feet, the thing is to ask them the question, what does it mean to you? It could be a Christmas tree. It could be a bone, a bone of contention or skeletons in the cupboard. It's not up to us to decide, it's up to us to ask the questions. Another interesting aspect is our clothes reflect our emotions. When we wake up in the morning, we go, what do I feel like wearing? And then we choose the color and the style according to our feelings. It's also how much of the body we expose. When we expose a lot of our bosoms, for example, we're reaching out for a little bit more nurturing. If the shoulder keeps being exposed, then we're looking for more support, less shoulds and shouldn'ts in our life, and so on. So we can look at the clothing and see what is going on, which part of the clothing is worn, torn, because this will be areas in the body that are also feeling worn out. And again, we can apply that to the feet when we're doing the massage. So the question to ask is, what are we entertaining in our body? Is it drama? Is it love? Is it passion? Whatever it is that we're entertaining is going to affect the energy in motion. So be aware of the horrors, the drama, the terror, the battles, the romance, the musical, the comedies and the adventure and make your choice because that's going to make you feel at ease. We use our arms to extend our emotions. We open our arms to hug and embrace and bring somebody close to our hearts who we love. And we also use our arms to keep somebody at arm's length. So when it comes to arm issues, see what's going on emotionally. Since everything is everything else, the whole body is reflected onto the arms and the legs. The fronts of the arms and the legs ironically reflect the back of the body and the front of the body is reflected on the back of the arms and the legs. This is very useful to know if you're a masseuse. And then of course there's the beautiful heart that gives us the gift of love. Love is what makes the world go round. 
The Beatles knew that long, long ago with their song. It's from the heart that we function. Many people think that it's from the head that we function, from the brain. But when we move on from this world, people don't go feeling the head and saying, is the brain still working? Where do they go? They feel the pulse. Is the heart still beating? The heart has its own nervous tissue. It is the center of our being. It's the center of who and what we are. And if we could only get out of our heads and function from the heart as society, what a world of difference it would be. The energy that comes from the heart is carried through the blood. And as I mentioned earlier, blood in unusual situations is a sign of unhappiness, particularly if it's through bleeding. So it's the red blood cells that pick up all the beautiful energy that we get from our food and life and air, and they circulate that around the body to give to the various cells. So what we are doing in life is going to affect the circulation of blood. If we are static, unhappy, and don't like what we're doing, then of course that's going to slow down the blood. It cannot get excited. But the moment we become ecstatic and happy and passionate about what we're doing, then the blood can bounce around the body with joy and happiness. When we feel starved of love, it also starves our heart and our blood flow. When we deny ourselves certain things in life, it's a form of starvation. The sort of things we feel starved of are attention, opportunities, company, familiarity, and this can affect, again, the breathing, the emotions, and so on. The heart reflex is actually on both feet. It's on the left foot mainly because it's to the left of the body and on the right foot as well. When we massage the heart reflexes with reflexology or reflexology, it helps us to accept ourselves, to nurture ourselves, brings harmony into the body and peace. It also lightens us up, gives us warmth, and it's the gift of love, the strength of being ourselves. Between the emotions and the doing, the second and third toes, and the balls of the feet and the upper instep, because of the air element from the emotions and the temperature element from the doing, we often will blow hot and cold. Also in between are the elbows and the knees. The elbow reflexes are on the side, the little lumps halfway down the feet, and the knee reflexes, interesting enough, because the legs are bent, are the same reflex as the nipple. So also take this into consideration when people are very needy, when they are unbending, when they're needing more space, there's many aspects that will affect the elbows and the knees, but it's all linked to the emotions. Scratching the toes brings to the fore whitish yellow patches, highlighting areas where intense emotions such as anger and frustration have been concealed when under duress, whereas stretching the toes wide apart and pulling them back reveals feelings that are likely to erupt when feeling stretched beyond personal limits. As the window to the seat of the soul, although the pineal pineal gland, the third eye, shares the same reflexes as the pituitary gland, its effectiveness is greatly enhanced by massaging the eye reflexes because its production of melatonin is greatly influenced by the amount of light entering the eyes, depending on the way life is being perceived. This influences the shape and color of the eyes as well as opinions formed. Massaging the chest, breast and diaphragmatic reflexes, as well as the thymus gland reflexes, releases emotions that are well past their sell-by date, making space for beautiful, fresh energies to be taken on board to boost morale, immunizing the whole. This also encourages greater flexibility when bending into new opportunities that enrich and enliven the spirit. The heart reflex is first massaged on the left foot, since the heart resides mainly on the left side of the body. By corkscrewing down with the right index knuckle between the big and second toes to the base of the left ball of the foot, and then altering its angle slightly inwards, the heart reflex will generally pop out. Gratefully and wholeheartedly massage this reflex before repeating on the right foot. Massaging these reflexes encourages the body to vibrantly fill every cell with love, joy and happiness. So be an inspiration and the way to do that is appreciate 
everything you have in your life because that will really make your heart very happy. If you'd like to explore this more, please go to my website www.alwaysbewithoutthee.com where you will find information on the nine books that I have already written on the subject of reflexology, channeling and the language of the feet as well as the emotional and spiritual aspects. Remember, healing and health are only two feet away.